ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقال عز وجل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا الى اخر الايه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب Today I want to talk about a very important aspect of manhood. And I'm going to try my best to explain my feelings about this issue. What does it mean to be a man? One of the words used in the Quran for men is qaum. Qaum means a people. And like in Surah Al-Hujurat you'll find wala yasr qauman an qaumin let not a man a group of men mock other men wala yasr qaum wa nisaa min nisaa nor women should mock other women so the word used for the men in that particular verse is qaum they are a qaum a people a people includes men and women but qaum is specifically men this is why when we pray we say qad qamat as-salatu qad qamat as-salat that the prayer is qam means to stand up right so qad qamat as-salat the time for prayer has come to stand up and it is wajib upon the men to pray in jamaah and so men have to stand up people who stand up together are men now you can have women that have the uh, the audacity and the courage and the maqam of men like aisha radiyallahu anha she was rijal she was a man in a sense not biologically but in terms of what she was able to achieve and her determination and so on and so forth anyway the point is men are people who stand up together okay and qaum is a people and qaum is from qama yuqimu okay to establish to stand up together what does that mean to stand up together men are a people who have a common dream they're in the same boat they feel each other we're in the same boat imagine you're with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you're praying behind him and you're going to go to and this is the battle before badr or uhud and you're praying behind you know you're all in sync about what you're doing why you're doing it you know your destinies are tied together that is a qaum a qaum is a people who stand up together who have a common feeling of destiny a common feeling of purpose a common feeling of if we fail we're all going to fail and if we succeed we're all going to succeed and that we all have to play a role in 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 our success Are we all going to sink in this boat? When you pray with a sheikh and you all have a common goal. Like I'll give you a very simple example. Okay. You watch those movies where there's a leader and he's leading the people and they have a common purpose and they have a common uh, destiny and they're small in number fighting against huge odds and the leader and the people with him they're all together they're in sync that is the type of people when they pray together their prayer means so much more than i am praying in a masjid i don't know the person to my right i don't know the person to my left i don't know anyone in the masjid i don't even know the imam properly is a very different prayer than when belal is calling the adhan when belal is calling the adhan and they know they all have a common destiny and the prophet is leading them in prayer they feel being behind the prophet of course he's the prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the other aspect is they know their destinies are tied the fate of medina is going to be the fate of all of them if medina succeeds all of them succeed if medina is conquered they're all conquered they're all killed and so when the prophet is saying oh allah guide us ihdinas sirat al mustaqim they're there they know one another they're on the same page the imam is in in this case the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is on the same page as the muqtadis those people behind the imam 
and Abu Bakr knows the person to his right and he knows the person to the left and many times he's already been to the battles with the person to his right and the person to his left. This is brotherhood, this is manhood, this is having a qawm, a people, a qabila. Qabila is from qabl, what you face, mutaqabilin. Allah says in Jannah, people will be facing one another. Qabila is a people who face challenges and difficulties together. Qabila is a people that face challenges together. So if you're just a, you know, a wanderer, so to say, uh, you're just an individual. You come and pray, you hear the Imam, and you say, Ameen, and you did your prayer. You don't know the person to your left, you don't know the person to the right. You're not part of a jama. you're not part of any group, you're not part of any group work. You don't have any sense of commitment. You don't have any sense of purpose. You don't have any leadership. You're not part of anything. Then you have destroyed the ummah. The, you know, I'll give you a very simple example. Look, people part of Tablighi Jama'ah. They travel. They do that one. Largest Islamic organization in the world. They come together in their bonds of brotherhood. They stand up together. They pray together. They have a common mission. We're going to go out, bring people to the masjid. We're going to go out and bring people to the masjid. Alhamdulillah, it's a good goal. Now when they're in their prayers, when they're in their doing their adhkars and their du'as, they're doing du'a together for a common mission. Oh Allah, we're going to go out. We're going to try to bring people to the masjid. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in changing the lives of the people and making them come to the masjid and become regular in the masjid. And they do these du'as and they bring people to the masjid. This is a common dream. It's It builds a... Uh, loyalty and commitment and his group feeling and his sense of belonging and this is something very 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 powerful and this is exactly what the muslims are missing why the muslims are broken why the muslims are broken spiritually intellectually ideologically and why we cannot even think of re-establishing the khilafa and why we cannot even think of re-establishing Medina, because, because we don't feel we all have a common destiny, because we don't feel we belong together, we don't feel, we don't realize we have a common destiny, that we have to, for example, break the ideas of ilhad, of atheism, otherwise our children will be affected about, by it. You can go on arguing and punching one another, Sufi that and Salafi that and Deobandi that and this and that, go ahead punch each other. But your children, no matter what group you belong to, are sinking in that boat, boat of atheism and godlessness. Your children are being exposed to these, uh, these LGBT and all these other movements you know, uh, that are going to corrupt their minds while you go on fighting one another. You don't, ha when you have a goal bigger than ourselves, bigger than my jama'ah, bigger than my sheikh, bigger than my, my particular mazhab, bigger than my particular, uh, me and my sheikh, we're going to, when you have a higher goal, that you want to achieve and you feel like is part of your common destiny and you're on the same page as your leader and the leader is in the same page as the people that are with the leader and they have an, an open door relationship with one another. When you feel you are on a mission and you have a purpose, a higher purpose, it could be as something as simple as we're going to do that one to everybody in the city. But just that that becomes your living and breathing and that becomes the purpose in your life and that's what brings you and the people around you together that we're going to introduce Islam to everybody in this city. That is a people, that is qawm, people who stand up together, people who face challenges together. Are you part of a jama'ah? Do you have an emir? Do you have an emir if you don't have an emir? If you don't have a jama'ah, then you are all alone and all the fitans of the world, you'll be facing it. You're facing your problems alone. You're facing your problems alone, number one. Number two, you're not a people, you're not a, what to speak of being an ummah. The word ummah, you know, the source of, and it also comes from the word mothers, and it also comes from the word imam. 
where your imam and your mothers and your people, they're all on the same page. They know they have a destiny. That we have to re-establish the Islamic system, the Islamic way of life. We have to re-bring back the Khilafah. This is what men do. Men make the world into what they envision the world to be. This is what men do. People who believed in communism fought for communism day and night till they established communism in Russia and in China, for example. Look at the sacrifices they made to establish communism in Cuba and other countries. People that fought for democracy. People that fought against a world of kingship. Against the tyranny of kingship. They fought for it. They, they brought about a world that they imagined. That is what men do. Men come together to create a better world. Men come together to create the world that they idealize. That's what it means to be a man. Men come together to re-establish the Khilafah. Men come together to establish a jama'ah, a, a source of protection for the people from the fitnas that are out there. Let me share with you this, that when you are in a jama'ah, when you are part of a jama'ah, and you have a purpose, and you have a vision of the future. You know, Iqbal, in one of his poems, he says, he says in his poem, the purpose of being a man is to create the world that you envision, to have great goals like reaching the stars. This is Iqbal just trying to make the point. And then he says in another place, if you're a pigeon, if that is what you are, if you're a pigeon and you got killed, it's your fault for being a pigeon. Why didn't you change the world? Why didn't you create the world that you imagined? Why were you not changing the world? Why didn't you become an eagle? Why didn't you become something bigger and better? Rather than complaining, do something. That's what men do. Men stand up together. And the Quran gives a very beautiful picture in Surah Saf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? And this is what Allah loves. Allah loves people coming together for His sake and doing things together for His sake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, He'll say, Aina yatahabbuna li jalali. Where are those people who loved each other for my sake? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu alladheena yuqatiluna fi sabilihi ka'annahum bunyanun marsus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people who fight in His path as if they're a solid wall. They stand up together, they eat together, they feel together. When you're part of a mission, right, and you hear your brother is in pain, then you feel pain because you're in the same mission. But if you're just a nomad in a sense, if you're just an individual, if you're just a wanderer, if you're just an anybody and some brother i feel for any brother that is hurt i feel for any brother that is hurt but if i'm on the same mission with him if i'm on the same page as in him if i'm in the same jama as him now there are many more rights this person has and many more emotional feelings i have towards this person are you part of a jama when you pray with your leader do you feel like you're doing the same dua do you feel like you're 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 on the same mission and that you're willing to do anything for this mission? And so when people stand up together and they feel they have a common dream, when they are working for that dream to become reality, when they're working, imagine the people in the future that will be with the Mahdi. It won't be easy, but they will be people who will sacrifice them for the bigger good. They will be on a common mission a common purpose, and that purpose will be everything for them. That's what they will do then. That's what we have to do now. The lesson of the Prophet ﷺ in the future of the Mahdi is what we need to do now. We need to revive the Jama now. We need to revive the Bayah now. We need to revive these things of common brotherhood and common destiny now. Because only when people stand up together they're a qawm. Only when they face challenges together, they become like one qabila. They become like one jama'ah. And the Prophet said, Yadullahi fawqal jama'ah. Allah's hand is on top of the jama'ah. And they have sama wa ata'ah. They listen and obey to their emir. 
because they know they they are in a common mission if you don't have a purpose of course the purpose individual so there's the individual i'm in the jama'a let's say some companion of the prophet sallallahu is in the jama'a praying like i am when i'm praying in jama'a i'm praying for myself but when i'm praying in a jama'a of people i know and we have a common mission and we're going to go and try to achieve that mission then my dua a Fatiha is not only for myself, it's for the people that are around me. It's for everybody that's around. That is a people who stand up together, facing challenges together, trying to do the impossible together. If you were David versus Goliath and the people that were with David, they were praying together, that, that formed brotherhood. Today we go to the masjid, we hardly know anybody. We go to the masjid, we have no unity. We're just a bunch of people together, but there's no unity. There's no unity of the hearts. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ عَادًا Remember the favor of Allah when you were all enemies. فَأَسْبَعْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانَ You found yourselves to become a brotherhood. How? Your hearts united. How did your hearts united? You had a great, you had a common purpose. How do you get that common purpose? Hold on to the rope of Allah, meaning the Quran. Look at Quran, the guidance in Quran. What does Quran tell you to do at that moment in time as a people? And then Allah says, ummatun. Let there be a group amongst you rise. Everywhere in the world, let there be a group of people coming together for a good cause. Ummatun ilal khair. That calls towards good. That you're calling towards something that is necessary and good at that particular time. It is not. Ha it is nothing to do with your ikhtilafat, nothing to do with your difference of opinions on this issue or that. It's it's about the need of the time. And so, waltakum minkum ummatun yaduna ilal khair. Let there be a group amongst you that calls towards all good. Wa yamuruna bil maruf, right? And wa yanhauna anil munkar. And they enjoin the good and they forbid the evil. These are the people that are successful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. But it is, you have to be part of a jama'ah. You have to be part of some Islamic mission. You have to be part of some Islamic group. It is only when men come together as men doing things that men do, Serious things that make nations, that make civilizations, that make family. This is why man gets married. Because it is the first step to creating a civilization. This is why a man has children and progeny. Because it starts with what Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, did. And it ends with what Prophet Muhammad والسلام, did. That he then established in his lifetime, in his lifetime, a that world that he imagined, the sharia that he imagined, the mercy that he imagined, right? لا فضل لأربي على عجمي ولا عجمي على عربي ولا أحمر على أسود ولا أسود على there's no superiority of the white over the black or the black over the white and there's no superiority of the Arab over the non-Arab or the non-Arab إلا بالتقوى except by taqwa he abolished riba he abolished all these things Right, that are chains upon the he gave people the freedom to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala. He that when people would come in, they would feel in amin, akana amin. They were in peace and security. The point being is, if you, men come together with their common purposes, with their common agendas, form a jama, and they do the work of bonding men. This is what men do. This is what nation building is. This is what a jama'ah does. It establishes its vision, the world that it imagined. Do you imagine a better world? If you imagine a better world and you are a man, then you have to work towards that world. And the way to work towards that world is you can't do it alone. You have to have a jama'ah. You have to create your own world. You have to have people that stand up with you. Stand up with that cause with you. That is what will make Islam meaningful. If there is a group of Muslims in a certain city, our, our, our jama'ah, we have a jama'ah. We want to bring everyone to Islam. We want to introduce Islam. Then these people think and breathe and pray and do everything. For And when they pray, they're praying together with that mission. And they have an amir and they have a jama'ah and they have bayah. They're doing it to bring Islam to this particular city. 
or you want to save yourself and your progeny and the future of Islam, so you have a jama'at to protect yourself from what? You you have a jama'at to protect yourself from the from the onslaught of the shayateen, from the onslaught of this dajjali fitans that are going on. So you form a jama'at where people can have a strong source of iman, a jama'at where men are made. Or you have a jama'ah where people come together with the goal of re-establishing the deen of Allah. An aqimud deen wa la tatafarraku fi. Establish the deen of Allah. Let people see that what Islam truly looks like. Like what does khilafa look like? What does the mercy of the Sharia brought by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What does it look like? What does Islam want us to live like? What is the what is would be what would it look like to resume the Islamic lifestyle? How can we throw away this paper, the, 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 the chains and the clutches and the slavery that we've been put in with this paper money? How can we go back to natural time again? Anyway, the point being is, if you're not part of a movement, if you're not part of a purpose, then you're missing out on a very big aspect of what it means to be a man. Because men shape the world around them into the world that they believe the world should be. This is what true men do. This is what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Rasulullah wa ladina ma'ahu. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And those that are with him, ashidda'u ala al-kuffar. They're very stern with those who reject the truth. Wa ruhama'u baynahum. And you see, and they are very merciful Amongst themselves, amongst their jama'ah, they have extreme mercy. They'll put their brother before themselves. This happens when you have a common purpose. Okay, people go to the masjid and see the shoes are not lined up. And people sometimes say, even our shoes are not lined up. How are we going to do anything? We can't do anything. We can't even line up our shoes. I say it's the other way around. Give a man a purpose and automatically the shoes will become orderly. Give him a higher goal to meet, and then the next thing you'll know, he's even putting the shoes in the right place in the masjid. Because this is when you have a reason to live, a reason to be organized, a reason to push, a challenge that you're facing together with a group of brothers you believe in, that's what makes life worth living. And the kuffar do this. Those that reject the truth, they know this and they do this and they live this. But a Muslim goes to a masjid and is completely disconnected from everyone. Or he, a Muslim listens to things and speeches on the internet, you know. But there's no connection, no human connection, no real human goal, no goal on the, on the ground, right? There's no purpose on the ground. You're, you don't have a brotherhood. You don't have an emir. You don't have a purpose. What are you living for? If you're serious, if you're serious, if you're serious, you will change the world in the image that you believe the world should be in. That's what it means to be men. Men come together to, to create that world that they think will be a better world. Inshallah, I hope I've explained this concept in some detail. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.